I'm ready whenever you are. Thank you. Uh, I'll call to order uh, the Thursday, February 9th uh, meeting of the Town of North Andover Community Preservation Committee. Pursuant to Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted by in-person and via remote means. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 8, Verizon Channel 26, or online at www.northandovercam.org. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or otherwise comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in the public meeting, please email your questions or comments prior to or during the meeting to CPC emails at northandoverma.gov. The question or comment will be provided to the committee before the meeting or read during the proceedings if received during or shortly before the meeting. Okay. Um, first, um, I guess, so we're going to run through some applications, um, and, and that's really going to be the whole focus for our, our night tonight and adjust our calendar uh, as needed for everything else. Bill, thank you for joining us. And we do have John remotely, so I think we've got everyone except for Tracy Watson and Jack Maven uh, for the minute. So uh, first thing on our agenda is public comment. I don't know if we have any public comment outside of application discussions right now. Okay, great. All right, so we'll move on to the uh, fiscal year 24 application. So uh, if you guys remember last year, we didn't get a whole lot, so careful what you wish for. Uh, we've got 17 applications um, before us this year. So I'd like to... In the interest of time, since we've got so many here, uh, I want to tackle how we want to break these up. We'll set dates for subsequent meetings to bring people in uh, and decide who we need to bring in. I know there's a few applicants who are here tonight. Uh, if the committee's in agreement, we can have some of that discussion now and start to, to, to bite that off um, you know, a little bit early rather than have to stuff it all into additional meetings if everyone's comfortable with that. Sure. Interesting. Okay, great. All right. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of take them in order. Uh, the first application we got for the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, so Lori put in this year for the full 10% allocation on the understanding of if we didn't have any other affordable housing applications, which we do not this year. So uh, I don't have the exact number. It'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of a low $200,000 number is my best estimate as to what that allocation would be. Um, but I think it's probably worth asking uh, Lori to come back in for a meeting to kind of discuss at least what they what their thought was and in, 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 in terms of doing that um, I kind of understand the rationale but I'd like to hear it from her um, she's also the applicant on the next two applications we move into historic preservation for the Neil painting uh, in the Stevens carriage house so it probably makes sense to have Lori back in for a meeting if everyone's on board with that hi Bill never sound so alone okay. <laughs> Um, next up, we have a uh, Historic Preservation Master Plan application from uh, the Community and Economic Development Division for a little over $30,000. I think it was submitted by Andrew Shapiro. Um, I think it makes sense to have Andrew come in and, and yeah. chat with us about that one as well in terms of what their goals and their plans are for that. Uh, I can't recall if that's being his submitted. Is it submitted in, in conjunction with Historic Society or separate from? No, separate from. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, next up, we've got two applications from Historic. Um, I do see Mr. Limper here this evening. We think we discussed this for a while at um, our pre-application process. Um, if you have anything to add from that, you're welcome to, to do so. But I think we covered it pretty thoroughly. So, Stan Limper, 43 Stonecleave Road representing the North Andover Historical Society. Uh, just when you looked at our applications, you'll, you, you would notice that we had refined our cost estimates. We had given you sort of rough cost as, estimates to start out with. So those are not that different, but just what we feel are the most accurate estimates. So that's the only thing I would say that had changed from our initial submittals. So um, other than that, everything was the same. And uh, you know now you see the details of what we uh, anticipate doing and uh, you know we're very optimistic that you'll help us because these are both 
very important projects to us and would really like to be able to proceed on those. So yeah, any other questions from what you read or anything? No? And I'm happy to come back if you have some others. No. Absolutely. I think we know how to find you. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. Uh, okay. Uh, do, do, do. We did, we have an application from um, the library uh, on behalf of uh, a continuation of the, the stairway project. Um, this is, I think, you know, additional for the construction. It seems to me to be pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, yes, Dan. Sorry. I could be so presumptuous to say as chair of the trustees, if you had questions, I could try to answer them. Right? Um, if we can if we if we want if anyone has any questions at this point but we would have to ask you to yeah. step out unfortunately um, does anyone have any questions well, I, I know when you went out for the bid on the other on the other section you couldn't get it uh, you only got one bid in it what, what makes you think you're gonna find uh, some more no, people? we don't know we have no idea if we can get bidders on this job you know it's a pretty complicated job and you know, the, the supplemental request is because now we have what we feel like is a, a, a firmer estimate on what it's really going to cost after they really looked into it. So, yeah, we're, we're hopeful we can get a bidder, but we don't know. We have no idea. You know, yeah. so that was discouraging when we only got that one bid. And they really didn't actually give us a serious bid. So we don't know. We, uh, we'll have to think about it if we don't get any bidders on this job now. So. so just for clarity, did you guys do like an RFP and say like we have yep. a budget of X dollars and we want you to bid on this project? Yep. yep. And so part of the concern could have been that there weren't enough funds to complete the project could as be. could have been as yeah. outlined. So, so, I mean, I guess the other way to do it is an RFQ where you get people who are qualified and then you bid it from there. Yeah. You go for qualifications first and then because I understand like it's chicken and egg. You can't get someone to bid unless you have money and you can't get money unless you know. um, as you all know because you know you do this a lot historic projects can be very complicated right and you don't know till you get started so you know we've been sort of this is an onion job you know you start peeling it back until you sort of figure out what it really takes um, unfortunately, for, unfortunately for us this is a pretty complicated job and I think that scared off people I mean they're not even doing an RFQ we might not get any interested parties, but that's an alternative, you know. I guess what we, what I would, my thought would be, if we could get the supplemental funds and then go out again for an RFP, if we got no bidders, then we would do an RFQ and say, okay, you tell us what you think it would take to do this job, and we'll go from there. So, you, you know, a, where do you get a bid to do a thorough investigation? In other words, like, I don't know. I mean. You would know a lot better than I would, but like, could you I, test? Is there some uh, way to test what's in there and scan and see I, I, I what's, think, what's involved? Well, I so think that, so now we've got plans? a pretty good idea of what needs to be done. Again, until you start the job, you won't really know mm -hmm. until you open that thing up. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you all remember the configuration, but there's stairs that go down underneath that, the, the front entrance. So they're going to fill that all in, right, and then replace the steps, you know. So you got to tear all that out, and once we tear all that out and look under there, it's like, the, well, okay, let's, we'll figure that out when we get to it. We don't expect any surprises over and above what we've already looked at, but you never know, so. Like some unit price items to be able to handle unforeseen site conditions? Uh, we haven't yet, but that's probably a good idea. You know, the, the this sort of RFQ or unit price. The, all, all good suggestions. So has anyone come in and really looked at it and kind of given you a We an have, estimate? yes. So that's where we got the yeah. sort of the supplemental from. We've yeah. had people come in and really okay. take a hard look at it. And, you know, that was some of the first money that we got and we spent to do that. So we've, you know, we've continued to refine that, and that's why now we need, you know, we've gotten the, what we feel are, is a better estimate. That's why we're here for the additional money. So, so what, one of my concerns is that we, we go to town meeting and we ask for a project and then we don't get it done, and then we come back and we ask for more money. I, I understand. And then, you know, and then you get, yeah. <laughs> you, I don't want a third swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, I get it. I get uh, it. I get it. Uh, um, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, yeah. we, we have the best idea we've got, and I don't know how we would get a better idea than this. Um, maybe I'd, I'd think about, about Bill's 
uh, Bill's idea, you know, we just sort of step back and say, okay, let, we're going to start over again and try something totally different. You know, start with, if this doesn't work, if we can't get bidders, if we've got the money and can't get bidders, then we'd try something totally different and get people to come in and tell us what they think it would cost. And we just wipe all this off the books and say, okay, we're not going to take them. We, are, you know, with, withdraw the request or you know, give back the money for this and start over from scratch. I guess I, I don't know what else we do. So, is there a regulatory, a governmental reason why an RFQ could not have been done? That's what I don't know enough about. Yeah, I, I, in terms of you know, I, that I would have to that. get. Ms. Burr's life in here and tell us <coughs> yeah, what yeah. the – it's not something I've seen done a lot in town. You know, you gentlemen know more about that. Not, it's not a, a common thing to happen. Uh, the process we're going through to me is what normally happens where yeah. you get some money, you get a consultant in, they analyze the job, they give you a cost estimate, and then you put together an RFP and go out mm -hmm. for a bit. <coughs> so um, that's what we've been doing. but. You know, lacking bidders, you know, right. uh, we've got to think of some other approach. So, well, you have, like, you know, when I read through, I read through it kind of quickly before, yeah. so admittedly. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't really do it, but you, you have designed documents. So, yes, yes. So, you've, you've gotten that far. So, yeah. people should be able to put an accurate number yeah. on it at this point. I, yeah, you know, and yeah. maybe it, you know, I don't know if. What might help me is if you went out to, you know, six potential bidders and said, like, is this project in the ballpark, you know, right. before we put this out on the street for, you know, for real prices that you're in a competitive bid situation, right. is this even worth your firm's time to go yeah. out and bid on this? Because that, yeah. that seems to me to be the thing. Like, maybe uh, it's yeah, just... Yeah, and I, you know, I, 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 I hear you. And I just, you know, I don't know exactly where that list of firms would come from, right? I mean, it, because it's kind of a specialized job. These aren't necessarily just your regular, like, stonemasons or, I mean, you know, it's not really clear who, you know, it's preservation P. I, you know, I don't know who, who would be on that list. So that's kind of a challenge all by itself is to be able to figure that out. You know, all good suggestions. I, you know, I'm, I'm vigorously agreeing, but... Um, you know, we're still sort of trying to go down this path and hope that this, you know, ends up with something good. And I guess I would take that suggestion and say, uh, if we get the money, if you give us the money and we go out for another RFP, to try to make sure we've got as good a list of people to send that RFP to as we can, sort of taking off on your idea. Let's sort of pre-qualify some people or talk to some people, be, you know, in part, as part of that process to get the best shot of getting a bid to do this job, so, okay. Welcome back, Ron Rudis, to the table. Um, okay, next up uh, on our list was the trustees of reservations put in a uh, request for refurbishment of the mural to Stevens Coolidge um, property. Um, probably worth, I don't know if we've had the trustees in to discuss much of anything recently. It's probably worth having them in for discussion on this one. I'd like to hear more about it. So, okay. Um, next up, we have five applications from Ridgewood Cemetery Association. Um, I do see the Ridgewood president here. I don't know if, you've, if you'd like to speak tonight or if you want to wait till the subsequent meeting, we can. It's entirely up to you. I don't know if we, we may need more time to digest some of these since there's five of them out there, if that's okay. Uh, we'll probably have well, you back for some. It would be good if you did an overview, if you could just give us a quick overview of each one of them. Yeah, actually, could you be, do that? That'd be great, yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. For the record, Joseph Pellich, 1915 Great Pond Road. Um, I don't know which one we would start with. What's on your list? Uh, probably second burial ground footings. Great. Right. So uh, I think historically you guys have uh, funded a different group when North Parish still um, had control of that cemetery. 
Uh, there was a smaller kind of family held uh, restoration company that would go in and do stones. Um, they don't do a lot of volume. They're, they're quite good at what they do. Um, they're also uh, perhaps uneconomic uh, on a larger scale. Generally, they're about $2,000 a stone. Um, I don't know exactly what the, the, the proposal is uh, for that, but we would be under 1,000. Uh, our superintendent actually has a, a business as well. He restores and resets stones. Um, he runs about three or four other cemeteries in southern New Hampshire. So we think we could get some scale. Um, we're very flexible. We appreciate all the help that the community gives Ridgewood. Uh, we could do it over a phased period. Uh, certainly, um, you know, we understand that there's only so much uh, uh, that, that, that you folks have to disperse. Um, but we thought that we would put in kind of uh, in aggregate the projects that we're thinking about uh, and have a conversation about what uh, should be prioritized and, um, you know, leave it up to you folks to kind of figure out how to allocate the total funds for this year. So that would be the second barrier of ground. And on that one, you, you did receive the $15,000 grant. Is that correct? Yeah, we did. That's great. Okay. And we're still in, we're actually um, working towards that. So we're trying to broaden, of course, uh, our, our kind of outreach and how we get funded. So we've worked um, on that. This is our first grant we've had, I think, in a while. Uh, so that um, was approved, and we will definitely continue um, down that, that road. I think for the second burial ground, we kind of have a good vision. We think it's going to take a while, uh, but certainly um, we would like to restore that to you know, it's a kind of original scope and, and particularly emphasize the history of the folks that are there. Uh, and I think that's been a conversation in the community for some time. Okay. If anyone has any questions on that one right now, but we can move to the next one if you want, Tim. So much you're, you're <coughs> estimating like $1,000, $10,000 per footing? I I'm mean, sorry, per, how much? Per st how much for the per? Uh, less than 1000 Less than 1000 I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so less, less than, than half of what you've approved prior? Okay. Um, and that will also help us kind of complete the allocation we still have outstanding. Similar to what we did at Ridgewood, we would like to level it off, um, spread loom throughout, have the grade. It, it, in essence, is real bumpy. Uh, and it's kind of like this. We didn't um, comprehend how decayed those uh, stones were and how fragile they were. We knew we had issues. We didn't know it was that extensive uh, from, for our first grant application. Once we pulled back all the weeds and the overgrowth, we got a far better idea. Okay. Okay. Um, next on your list was uh, the Ridgewood Boundary Line stone wall. Sure. Project. So at the cemetery itself, if you folks are familiar with going through there, in essence, if you pull in and you kind of go to the new area in the back, uh, along the left line, uh, we do have like an intermittent stone wall. Um, it definitely could be um, uh, enhanced relative to the other walls throughout the cemetery. So it's it's hand laid, but it's small, it's uneven, um, and we kind of envision that area to be upgraded to match the front section. So uh, we're hoping that over time we can kind of have uh, more equality between the older section and the new section, which would also um, one of the things we're doing is encouraging uh, more diverse stones. His, uh, from the 40s or 50s, I think, we restricted stone size. So now as a board, we're looking at more decorative, ornamental stones and so on in the newer section. So it's more balanced. That would be kind of part of that whole process. And so if I'm... Um, so is it like the existing wall that's there now on that border, impartial, it's kind of a hand laid like traditional wall and would the whole thing be in that style or would it look more like the I think it would look more like certainly not the front along Salem Street uh, those are big you know granite blocks probably laid by you know some horse and, and, and um, you know uh, lift system uh, but throughout the cemetery particularly uh, on the backside um, towards where the Leland area is, if you pull in way to the right, you'll see some really, really nice um, done stone walls that are like three-sided. They're, they're perfect, if you will, right? So they're, they do have mortar in them, but they're hand laid. We just use the mortar kind of as a redundancy to help keep that wall together. We hope it lasts hundreds of years. Okay. 
Any other questions on the boundary line right now at this time? Okay. And so we'll probably dig into some of these a little bit deeper as we go further on. Uh, 419 Johnson Street. Great. So that's a, a property that we've just acquired at the end of um, December. That was a cow farm. Not even people from North Andover were really well aware that it was there. So I, I don't know if you folks know this is a really, really big uh, barn right off of Johnson Street. You cannot see it from, uh, from Johnson Street. Uh, the Giard family owned it, and they came to us. They wanted to preserve it. They didn't want it developed. And we are thinking you know, many, many decades ahead. Um, but we think that it was a great fit for our cemetery. It's great storage for us. Uh, ultimately, we had hoped to acquire a home for our caretaker, for our superintendent. Uh, we hope he um, takes the benefit of that. If he doesn't, we're sure someone in the future will. Uh, the barn is quite good structurally, but it does have um, uh, immediate need for some repairs like a roof, some shoring, uh, and some other um, repairs that are outlined in that list. The property perimeter, it would be nice, I think, uh, we have line items for kind of getting site control again, surveying, some fencing, uh, and things of that nature. And uh, of course, we'd also, we're talking to the board, we actually have a meeting Tuesday about future uses, but it, I would encourage everyone to go take a look. Beautiful, beautiful five acres, rolls a bit, but generally flat. It could potentially be many things. It could be leased out to a farm. It could be for the community for fields. Uh, you could fit quite a few soccer fields back there. Just a phenomenal piece of land. And uh, in some regard, it's the cemetery land banking, you know, a, a nice piece of land for a generation from now that we as a community could work together and try to figure out a way to to use that to all our benefit. That, I think, is of all the applications, I can only speak for myself. For me, that's probably the most important. I think the, each member of the board has kind of a different um, project that they would like to push forward. But Johnson Street is pretty important for us. Um, is that barn currently designated historic by the no, Bottom but it's, it would qualify. It would qualify? Okay. Yeah. So it's, I think, about 100 years old. Okay. I think that's one of our requirements to be eligible for historic funding is we need to at least receive that designation. Absolutely. From either, if not from the state, at least from the, from the town. So. Sure, and we're very flexible on, on all that. We're very familiar with it. And with the lawyer um, uh, on our, as a trustee, he's always worked with the town and, and to kind of put whatever restrictions or protections is a better word um, on anything that the cemetery is involved in for the future. Yeah. So the, but the primary reason for acquisition was for future use, you're saying, for the cemetery? Absolutely. Future for, planning? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone have any questions on 419 Johnson? Here you go. No, I'll have one, but no. Okay. <coughs> You'll save them? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Next up, um, the historic documents. See if it gives a quick overview of that one. It seems pretty straightforward. I think we, it's just a small funding um, yeah. to kind of finish that project that we've been working on for some time. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the, uh, the tank. So I, everyone has a different uh, kind of feeling about that. I think for us, or for some of us on the board, we're very pleased that um, the Georgetown VFW was kind enough to give us a 100-year lease on that. Uh, it's an artillery piece, actually. It's not even a tank. Right. Um, but we're going to restore it, we hope. Uh, and ultimately, I think, you know, long term, one of our plans was to, to have a larger veteran section. And that would be a great, for us, it would, we think that that would perhaps be a good kind of element to it, uh, similar to like cannons and, and things like that when you go through some of the older cemeteries where uh, veterans are buried. So it's big, we know, um, but it is, you know, a nice piece. And generally, we've had really, really good feedback about uh, getting possession of that. Okay. Has it been moved? From where we temporarily put it? Well, no, from Route 133. So you got a temporary place for it now? Oh, it's in the cemetery. Okay. Yeah, we put it behind, like, our, our workhouse where we store our, our equipment and stuff um, so that the guys can work on it and start that process. Uh, but it was there for, what, 40 years anyway at the VFW, yeah. maybe longer. Um, but we're really lucky, and, and um, well, we're happy about, about getting that. 
I didn't see you guys have an actual estimate for that work. It, it seemed candidly less than I would have expected. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I don't recall. We okay. someone else was kind of spearheading that, Jim Lafond, and, and um, we have a new kind of uh, assistant administrator, Sharon. Mm -hmm. So okay. Sharon's been helping us, and I think they they put that together. Okay. I think we'll if there's a number, it's a good number. Okay. Dave Rand also has spent a lot of time looking at that. And Dave's phenomenal. Dave spends a lot of time helping us at the cemetery, and I know he's. Um, reached out to some of the body shops in town and asked them if they would help us and commit. So if there's uh, a budget number, it's, it's going to be a good number. We hope to do it for less, I'm sure. And with Dave uh, heading it up, it may happen for far less. Um, I think we may want to have some more of them come in, you know, in a subsequent meeting, maybe just to, just to button a couple of that, sure. that up. Um, but certainly interesting. So. Um, Okay, I think that was everything from, from Ridgewood for the year. So, um, diverse group of projects. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next on our list is uh, somewhat of a unique application. It's our last historic preservation one that's from the uh, Trinitarian Church um, for restoration work to their ceiling. And there's, a, I guess, a couple of wrinkles with this that we're going to need to discuss. The first and foremost is the money's already been spent. The work has already been done. Um, so I know we, we have it on, at least on our funding forms, that you cannot, that we can't retroactively fund projects. I spent a lot of time going through the CPA legislation to see if that's true as a part of that. And I've not been able to find anything or the other, so I'm going to try and get some direction from Stuart. So at least know, at, at the Community Preservation Coalition, unless you have better direction than I do, Gene. Um, so I just want to make sure I get clarity on that. That's uncomfortable, but or, so, uh, St uh, Stuart will probably yep. be able to well, give us a... Brian, oh, John, John, sorry I'm late. Uh, no, that's all right. You know, my perception is there that if the, the money is already spent, the project's done, that it's not an eligible project. Um, uh, certainly, if it's a municipal thing, maybe if it's a third party, it might be a little bit different, but that was my impression. But, you know, we obviously, related to churches, have the broader issue of the, the litigation and what we're allowed to fund and what we're not allowed to fund, which I think is the more significant thing we need to discuss. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. That, that was, I was wondering if, the, if it would be a moot point, you know, because the money has already been spent on that before we have to get into the the three-step test as to whether or not it's it's even eligible um, to be funded based on the, I think it was the, the Town of Acton lawsuit, John, is that correct? From yeah. 2018? Yeah. Um, so I, I think what I'll, let me let me try and get answers, because I think we, we have a, as a committee have the ability to decide if we think that the project passes those three steps, but I won't put us through that rigmarole if we can't, if it's completely ineligible because it's already been spent, if that is an absolute... Uh, hard and fast. I, there was a, a cover letter with the application that did describe the mitigating circumstances as to why they couldn't wait for our funding, which I'm, um, you know, I, I think I certainly understand and, and appreciate that. Um, but I'll find out if our if our hands are truly tied on that. So we can discuss this one at a future meeting. But I, I agree with you, John. It, it's I think it's like we, we had the St. Paul's application a few years ago. It was the same yeah same situation. Yep. So okay. Um, all right, next up, moving into uh, open space, um, Bradford Street acquisition. Gene, do we want to discuss any of that tonight at all, or is there anything to discuss? Sure. The only thing there, Gene, is, is this something we want to do under executive session? It's a good yeah. question. That probably wouldn't make sense. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I probably would have had to have that on the agenda for us to move into right. executive session, so we'll, we'll yep. take that up at a future meeting then. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right. Good call, John. Thank you. Um, all right. Next uh, is the subsequent balance of funding for the uh, retitled Lake Kachikawik Boat Access, or Lake Access, not Boat Ramp. Uh, it has been absolutely renamed. Um, so I wouldn't mind getting a quick update on that project, and maybe we'll have um, other. Oh, there you are. That's here. I didn't even see you back there. Good evening, Ted Kelly, two fourteen Sutton Hill Road. Ted. 
this was basically the continuation of the design work to complete the design. Uh, this phase would essentially be for the tasks that were laid out initially last year by the engineers to do the permitting, final bid documents, and bidding to uh, then con start the construction in the following year. So this is, um, we've been working with EV partners through the conceptual design, and this is um, the funding to do the rest of that work. Okay. Have you had a chance to see the plans and everything? Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, anyone have any questions for Mr. Kelly right now? Did you have any idea you were going to get into it this big? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you always kind of shake your head when you get the construction cost estimates. And okay. But the uh, engineers and, you know, John Borghese is, says, you know, this is what civil engineering costs these days. And yeah. it's still a little mind-boggling, but, you know, it's the lake water supply. Yeah. We're hoping if the water level is like it was this year, it'll be a little less to do, right? They don't have to do as much dewatering and damming. Yeah. But who knows what it's going to be next year in 2024, so... I appreciate you taking this on. That was, that was this is quite a task. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's sad to see it in the state it's in, and uh, I hope to be able to use it before I, you know, die. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess the only question I have, if no one else has any other questions, is it, any surprises so far along the way uh, for you in terms of the scope and, and what you guys have uncovered in the – in the discussions mm -hmm. with the different stakeholders? Not really. I mean, mm -hmm. people are generally supportive. You know, obviously there's been a lot of discussion about the ramp design, and we've, I think we've beaten that to death. But mm -hmm. I think we've, having Peter on the team, he's, you know, driving, you know, what that's going to be. And we are very confident a trailer cannot back down into the lake. Yeah. And, um, but I think it, it's a nice scheme. You know, there, there was some discussion, like, if you make it too nice, is it going to become a park and people are going to be hanging out there? And we're trying to just keep it more for you know, lake access, and it is a, a, a public space to hang out, but we do want to make it nice. Um, is, there, is there a reason that that's not a good idea? Well, you know, it's it's really just the amount of space, amount of users you could have at one time sure. if people are starting to use it as a picnic area, and then someone wants to come and use it for boating, and then, you know, now we've got a kind of conflict of interest there. But, okay. um, no, I, I think... It's other than, you know, the engineering costing a little more this time around and, and then their, their estimated cost, everything's been going like we expected. Uh, I, I, fortunately, when I look at, look at this, I thought it was a great project from uh, the point of a lot of uh, seniors can't get to see our lake. They can't stop it. There's no way for them to, if they can't walk down the path, they have no way to get to the lake. And this is going to be a great opportunity for them to be able to go down there and sit there and see the lake. Maybe you should put some parking that says for boat permit people only and some parking for, you know, a few park for, for the park. You know, just to try and make sure you get, because I, I, I understand what you want. You want to make sure your boat people can get in there. But I, but I also was really impressed by the, the fact that you were going to be able to get people there who could not necessarily go down and spend some time and enjoy the lake. Yeah, I mean, it, the site's big enough to push the parking out more and add more <clears> parking <throat> if people think that's important because there's unused par portions of the lot that could take more parking. And if it's, you know, we're trying to look at maybe bringing some of the costs down. We had pavers slotted to be used in the parking area. But that could be gravel. So you could, you know, enlarge that a little bit. Um, but um, unless there's a real push for people to say make it bigger than what we've currently designed, I think it would probably stay where it is. But yeah, but I, I mean, you can all. You, I think you designed it so that you're sort of doing it modularly, if you will, and so you start with a certain amount, and if you need more, you add more over time. I mean, that's something that the planning board tries to do in a lot of different projects because it's. Does it make sense to build parking that in the end you don't need, but if you can build the capability for expansion, then you can see what the reality brings you. Yeah, good point. Yeah, you can certainly add it on later for sure. Yeah. And then um, I remember a messy part of this was figuring out, like, who actually had jurisdiction over approving plans and so forth. Is that all sort of figured out in terms of who you have to go to to get it approved? 
Well, I mean, we've been dealing with Department of Public Works and then planning. Gene's been a big help, you know, helping us ma navigate that. Uh, we've got conservation. We don't know who else. You know, we got seven different governing bodies to get permits from. Wow. <laughs> so I think yeah. we've got the, you know, stakeholders looking at this. We need to. Is there anybody else? I mean, do we have to go we to? Need, we need an Army Corps permit, too, I believe. Yeah, they're, they're on the list. Yeah. I mean, do we have to go in front of the selectmen? I mean, I don't know. You, you tell me. <laughs> I, no, I just don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we think we have it covered. I mean, we got assume you do and just get on their schedule. I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, with the DPW and planning conservation, we think we've got all the people who are going to have to make a call on this. Okay. And then the, the plan would be come in the following year for the construction amount. Yeah. That, and at that point, we'll have bid documents and have it out to bid, so that number hopefully gets tighter than what this we, estimate is. You know, construction costs get more reasonable. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a guy can dream, can't he, Rick? Um, okay. okay. Any other questions for Mr. Kelly? No. Yeah, great, great, great work. Yeah. This is a great example. So, uh, okay. The last uh, project we have uh, here is from Black Swan Realty regarding Sutton Pond. And Sasha, I don't know if you feel like speaking tonight on it or. Um, we, we, there's probably a lot to digest in this particular application, so you're probably going to have to come back one way or the other. But if you want to give us a quick overview, yeah. I think that'd be helpful. Yeah. Sasha Weinrich, 21 Sawyer Road. Um, so the grant application that we submitted, um, I'm the trustee for Black Swan Realty Trust, so um, I can speak on behalf of the trust. Um, and it's to fund the initial engineering scope that would help support a pedestrian, pedestrian rail trail to include Sutton Pond. So the entity owns the entirety of Sutton Pond, um, which is, if you aren't familiar, um, on the corner kind of behind Main Street, so um, Sutton Street and Main Street where it intersects. Uh, and it's where historically the old um, Boston and Maine Railroad used to utilize um, the old, what's called the Dizzy Bridge. So, um, you know, it used to be a place that adults now in town who grew up here probably would hang out at and congregate at, fish at, um, and we'd love to see that parcel um, be utilized by our community again. And so it's really just to fund an initial engineering scope to help support that so it can be incorporated into what, you know, I think, um, and Jean can speak to it a lot better than I can at this point, but what I think the town is hoping um, for a rail trail in our community. And quite frankly, utilizing Sutton Pond for this use to increase open space, recreation space, and connectivity from High Street to Main Street aligns directly with the master plan that was already approved in 2018. Um, it was actually specifically outlined in page 80 of the master plan. They even mentioned utilizing kind of the old railroad bridge as a connectivity point. So we'd love to kind of begin the initial steps to do that with Sutton Pond um, as an anchor and happy to answer any questions about the specifics of the scope or any other questions you might have. I mean, the, the question that's most obvious to me is kind of how does it work out in terms of like it's private property yeah and then what would it would it be an easement and kind of where would maintenance responsibilities and, and such lie like I think that's what kind of jumps to mind for me because it you know it is an awesome project it's really interesting in that it's on uh, private property and it's when we do projects on private property definitely but they're usually they're usually not open space they're usually you know historic preservation so yeah. So, so um, we'd be happy to enter into an MOU or any kind of a you know an appropriate agreement with the town, so that the public has access to the property, um, and we can kind of work out the fine details so it makes sense for all the stakeholders. But we're really just looking to be able to give back to the community and have them have access to that parcel. It's you know really underutilized right now, um, and it kind of is a shame. As someone you know with two young children, it'd be really nice for them and their friends to walk to Main Street after school and be able to go fishing um, in a safe, beautiful piece of land. Um, and that's what we're we're hoping to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Just go over one more way though, right? Uh, just to Sutton Pond, or is it going to cross <coughs> that second piece? to connect uh, um, the, the, mill, the, the mill area? Well, I think the intent is to have connectivity fully through the mill area to the other piece of the rail trail, but that is something we would talk to um, community and economic development about. Obviously, we can only control 
like our own <laughs> our own parcel, and, and they have they have other plans that they're working on. But we would need this piece, this engineering scope um, for this this parcel to know what can be done with the bridge, um, with potential, for example, pocket parks on that parcel to have access to the pond, um, and go from there. But that that area would connect. I mean, High Street to Main Street. That the um, old uh, railroad bridge would be but able to do that. But then you'd be walking through the parking lot of Sutton Pond, right? Because, right? That's why I was just wondering how you would do that. And we, you know, part of that work is to do a survey to understand where the, the perimeter of the parcel lies and what would be the most effective way to connect it to other parcels and, and how that would all work. Yeah, and I think part of the, we'll probably want to get Andrew Shapiro in as well to kind of discuss part of this in terms yeah. of how it fits in with the overall rail trail mm -hmm. project and where that, Right, because I think you know we don't have like one continuous gap here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we don't have a continuous rail easement anymore. You know, right. So many sections have been abandoned right. that they've got. I think some plans which are I think are shown here conceptually. Um, and, and just we have had you know preliminary conversations, and I can I can invite Joe if you want as well to come up. Joe Pelich happens to be my father um, and involved in this um, in these conversations as well um, because this is his area of expertise in terms of um, his background. So happy to. To invite him to speak and to, to talk to Gene, you would know better than. I, I think. I think part of my questions, and whoever can answer it, is you know a lot of the it looks like the majority of the scope is regarding dams and culverts, mm -hmm. right throughout the the project. And are those all within Sutton Pond Dam, or are they on, on are they off premises on other parcels, as well? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, we did meet with the with the retained engineer. Um, that is working with uh, with Gene and Andrew, and uh, also we've retained GZA, another engineering firm, for ourselves personally, in order to kind of get a handle of what the flood capacity is, what the ultimate height of Sutton Pond is. Um, they believe that they perhaps have to do a study starting at Lake Chickawick, and that anywhere there's an impediment to water flow, they'll do an analysis of what volume of water can come through and what ultimately goes to the Merrimack River. So if you look at the proposal, each uh, it's broken out by literal area um, of where that where they have to do a review. Um, and uh, it, it literally starts, I think, at what we would have called when we were kids the hatch at, at Lake Achiquick, the, part, the piece where the water flows from Lake Achiquick into Stevie's Pond. Okay. And then again, where Mill Pond, where, where um, is that the name of the road from memory? I'm trying. Where Stevens Street, where Stevens right? Stevens yeah. Street crosses yeah. Mill Pond, there's a culvert under there. They have to they have to size that, study that, all the way down. Some of that data may be available. Um, I have to call Dave Steinberg. He did a lot of work uh, at the mills himself and a lot of engineering study. So that price would be for everything. Talking to the town's engineer, uh, to Andrew, to Gene, um, if we can collect data along the way that others have done that will drive that price much lower. I think ultimately that study does a bunch of things, but one of the things it will do is set the, if the town decides to want to cross Sutton Pond and kind of reestablish the old Dizzy Bridge, uh, give it its height, right? Because they're gonna say, okay, worst case, and you know this storm event, um, the volume would be this much, the height will be this much, and we'd have to set the, bri the, the crossing at that certain level. There was also additional discussions about uh, putting a walkway over the existing earthen dam, and there's a um, sleuthway right along uh, Sutton Street uh, that's also kind of part of, of the property, and uh, there was a discussion about perhaps bridging that as well, and then putting a, par a pocket park down in that area. But you know, as Sasha suggested, we're wide open to discussion as far as um, uh, rights and things of that nature. I think. Uh, it would be Good. quite simple for an attorney or attorneys, town council, to, to come to a quite easy, simple agreement um, where rights would be Good. appropriately given to the community. Good, right. John. John, yeah, I just a question to, to try to set a little bit of context. And I'll admit I didn't look at the application carefully, so if this was there. But the entity that owns the pond today, mm -hmm. is that a private entity and for what end does it exist i guess is what i'm trying to understand my apologies i don't understand the last piece of your question it is a private entity black swan realty trust 
holds the whole parcel, including the DeVita dialysis building. So in, in the end, I mean, you know, I don't want to get into the details of it, but if it's a private entity, it exists for some purpose to make some money in the end. So is there a, a business associated with it or, you know, what is, is, is the overall context of, of the entity and how it fits in? The trust simply holds that parcel in fee so that the, the, the deed is to Black Swan Realty Trust. On that master parcel, on that larger parcel, sits a 12,700 square foot building, um, which currently is leased to DeVita Dialysis. Okay, so that's, that, okay, okay. But I think, John, if, if uh, and I've had uh, lengthy conversations with um, John Smolak and Brian Vaughn, uh, two local attorneys, about, about the structure of this, and um, I've been told it's quite achievable, it's not, it wouldn't be difficult for the town uh, to enter an agreement with Black Swan and kind of seed rights away uh, while still preserving zoning and other issues that would need to be preserved for the structure itself, for the building on site, um, and whatever other agreements would be necessary to make sure that um, this property was protected um, for the community. The part of okay. this application also, I think, will be really helpful um, to community development. The survey piece, uh, I think that uh, working with Andrew, speaking with Andrew, speaking with Gene, speaking with Concom, um, there was a discussion about where that trail connects. So in essence, uh, it used to go when we were kids from the high school all the way down. It was uh, open, you could ride your bicycle down to, to Sutton Pond. Uh, you could ride your bicycle over the Dizzy Bridge. Um, so part of the issue is now that Avalon's built, uh, no easement was taken. Avalon didn't set aside any property for uh, the rail trail. And you'd have to negotiate either with Dave, St with Dave Steinberg, which would be easy. Dave's very supportive of this. I've called him. We've spoke about it uh, as well. Avalon's a big entity, so obviously Gene and, and Andrew would work out whatever they had to with Avalon if they could. But um, we think uh, we had two different title abstracts done on the property and we had uh, Brian Vaughn look at it really closely and it's a question as to whether where the ownership of Black Swan ends, if we're lucky as a community, if Black Swan has title all the way to the base of um, the other side of Osgood Pond, that may be a great access point, and I think that's originally what the community was hoping they'd be able to get from the condominium association, which my understanding is that negotiation fell apart. So if we do have title to the property right where that waterfall is, that may be a great, great opportunity to bypass Avalon, to bypass kind of going all the way around or through the parking lot and kind of going straight through. If you look at the proposed plans that GPI um, made for, the, for North Andover, you'll see that part of that was probably a 10-foot trail around uh, Osgood Pond um, and then back around the right side of Avalon um, on the kind of uphill side. So th I think the survey would really help from a planning perspective. And that's part of the application. questions on this. I mean, we'll have more questions, I think, as we kind of dig into it. I mean, it's obviously a lengthy application, and we'll certainly want to get uh, the rail trail update to the extent that Andrew and Gene are ready to do that at sure. future time, right? Yeah. I, I think Unless you have anything you want to add now. But. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Do have time to look at the application in more detail. You'll see conceptual plans are attached to it. Those conceptual plans were done on our behalf by GPI, yeah. and I know Joe and, and Sasha have had conversations with them as well. But the conceptual plans do envision really the main spur um, starting next to Dave Salon on Main Street, re-implementing a dizzy bridge type design. Um, but we've we've also had some very preliminary conversations with Clean Harbors which we'd have to go across parcels there, 
as well as Avalon, as well as RCG, and everybody's been really supportive. However, <laughs> Clean Harbors has to go to their corporate reality. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a really long process. Um, early indications, even Davis Salam, we've met with them. They were positive. I think the spurs that Joe's referring to for a pocket park, you can see on those conceptuals. It does, and I think at one time we contemplated going over the DM area, but we've, we've walked away from that. But we do have two spurs that would go across Joe's property to Sutton Street. So it would be just, and there's another one off of Avalon onto Perry Street, because they actually own some frontage on Perry. And so the idea is get all these neighborhoods to be able to access at different points and, and enjoy the trail. Ultimately, if we can connect up to the Mills to Hills Trail, that's the goal, and then the Mills to Hills gets you to Wire Hill. So it's, it's I would, and I think Andrew will speak to this. I mean, it, on our end, it's really, really preliminary. I mean, it's, this is going to be a long project, and it takes a lot of time. <laughs> um, so there's, there's definitely challenges along with it, and there's funding, right? So um, we, we do have funding for GPI to do these conceptual plans. Um, we're nearing the end of that. We're going to try to do some public engagement in the very near future. We have one more abutting property owner to speak to, and after that, we hope to have some public engagement. So, and and I believe these studies would need to be done. For my limited knowledge of this, we would need these. I just, in my opinion, right now, it's really preliminary, but I, I don't doubt that we'd need this type of survey work and sure. hydraulic work. Okay. Okay. Any questions? If if I could also point out in the application, if you look at how it's aggregated down to over three hundred thousand um, dollars, knowing what Jean said, knowing that this is a process and um, there's going to be flexibility and, and perhaps it will be accelerated, perhaps it will be slower. I think that will depend on what agreements are made in um, a survey and where, where the trail essentially ends up. Um, if you could use, if you could utilize almost wholly the Sutton Pond land, then I think that would make this a more rapid process, at least in that area. Um, but perhaps, you know, I'm wrong. There's an allowance that we put in for $150,000 if you look at the line items. And in essence, we simply say, we're well aware we don't know exactly where we'll be, but we would love to take direction from community development. And um, if those folks wanted to delegate to us once we kind of got there, hey, you know, do this study or however the community, however the town wants to uh, uh, provide that scope of work, uh, then it would be, in essence, already funded, ready to go. So perhaps that would speed things along. I understand there's a big difference in um, timing between private and public sector. Um, being in the public sector, I like to accelerate things and uh, with well aware and respectful of the fact that things can slow down and take much longer. I'll just say from what I think you're saying in terms of where the waterfall is and your property going right up to Senior Center Way, I'll call it, which mm -hmm. leads to Sutton Bond. Mm -hmm. The topography there is extremely challenging. Yeah. The Downtown Improvement Master Plan actually envisioned a trail connecting on, in that area, and it's just the topography is like this. So yeah. I don't know that I see that, but I will affirm that we initially, what I thought would be the quickest hit to get some connection to the mill area was to come off a of Senior Center Way and cross Osgood Pond, which Sutton Pond Condominiums owns, and that discussion was cut short really, really quickly. So they have no appetite to have people crossing, people sitting in their condos looking at people crossing any type of bridge over that pond. And if this trail was to come any higher than Avalon, we'd have to cross their property. And again, I don't see that happen. And with Avalon being, they, they were just really concerned with Avalon alone and the amount of people that are going to be now crossing through. So I think the more achievable route is kind of what we've laid out in those conceptual plans. I, I completely agree, and I understand the grade differential. Yeah. Perhaps it could be somehow engineered. Um, one of the things I think it's important to think about from a survey perspective is um, instead of getting... A, is it Laidlaw? I apologize. I don't remember who owns the... Uh, Laidlaw one the did, but I think Clean Harbors. Clean Harbors, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So it used to be Laidlaw. Yeah. Um, perhaps that trail that, that's depicted by GPI could be kind of moved over closer to Sutton Pond. Um, I know we all walk that area, but it's, it eliminates one more piece, one more person to negotiate with, and one more, you know, a big company that may be much harder to get 
uh, the rights that the town seeks. If it could slide over onto the Sutton piece, uh, onto the, I'm sorry, Black Swan piece, uh, that eliminates a big stretch and it accelerate, kind of accelerates the process, maybe makes it easier. Okay. Yeah. It, really early, this is really early. So yeah. yeah, I mean, we'd be open to any conversation, so. Are you the We'll defer to you folks to work that out. It's probably beyond the scope of this committee to, to have those discussions yeah. uh, at this point. So um, one, the only other question I had is, is you did check off historic preservation as one of the uh, is that with regard to the dams, or have they been deemed historic in, in some instances, or the bridge, or, is, or the bridge? Because this, because this funding would be for the dam survey. So I just want to just make sure I get our ducks in a row in terms of where we're allocating funds. So I, I think the 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 funding would also be for the the bridge, right, okay. for the railroad bridge, because in essence, you need to figure out the elevation of the water where it will okay. ultimately be. Um, you could probably you could probably check all those boxes. Got right? you. Got you. Okay. Quite a story behind that. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. Um, okay, I don't. I don't. You think can I... swim inside it and kind of hide in it. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't if you grow up there, that. you probably swim. There. Um, I don't have any other questions at this time. Like I said, I, I think you know there's a lot to digest here, so I think we'll definitely have one have a subsequent meeting on this. So thank you. Great. We we appreciate the consideration. Yeah, thank subsequent you. Subsequent meeting. Just a suggestion. I'm not sure if you're going to have. I know it's so preliminary. Any kind of rough order of magnitude because you put out several thousand dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars now, and what's the risk you're planning on in the future? The people, you know, is it going to be for good? What's the, what's the likelihood of it's going for good, or is it going to be, you know, just rough order, mag real rough order of magnitude in the future? So, it's, so when you, so I apologize for not fully understanding. In essence, you mean. What an whole, estimate of the total project? Correct. You're doing a preliminary, st preliminary study now, mm. uh, as, and then the estimates, and basically, it's part of the current, in the coming years funding. I'm kind of interested future funding. What you think it might entail? Absolutely. We started pricing that actually. You did. So we did start. We called um, several big contractors who do that kind of work, and we had two meetings already on site. Just. Uh, uh, we talked to GZA about funding to, re uh, to rehab the, the, the dam, I, I, it's the concrete structure. Um, and that's something that when we entered into an agreement with the community, uh, we could do a joint application. There's lots of funding available from the state. Um, so that would be part of it. I'm not sure about the, um, the bridge uh, itself, but we did have a contractor who specializes in that and came down and talked to us. We need, uh, it's in the list, we need borings to figure out uh, how we attach on both sides. Um, and then we would need some borings in the pond itself uh, to see how deep we have to go with, um, with the piers. But I, I think that I could have a pretty reasonable number, at least from a private sector number, it would probably be significantly different than what the town would pay. So my costs as a private citizen, you know, not having a different kind of, um, structure um, and who we would be able to use as contractors versus like, the community, um, we found them, that number to be significant, maybe half. Would the, um, Jean, maybe you could answer this, the, would it be significant to the town to know that information about the dams and, and everything on where the water's coming and what, we could, what the capacities are? Is it good for us to know in the future, knowing that, even if this project never took off? <coughs> Right. Having it for any other purpose, probably not. I would not. <coughs> so. I, I don't think we own any of the dams the way we own some of the culvets for some of the dams. Right. I think for the, um, we met with, um, and I, I apologize, I know him, uh, our town engineer. Sure. So he came down and took a look at the, there's a really nice culvert that goes under Sutton Street. Um, it's pretty, you should take a look at it. It's, it's, you don't even know it exists, but it's all hand-laid brick underneath that supports Sutton Street as the Kachikwik brick goes under it. I think that's part of, that would probably be really, really helpful for the, for um, that data would be helpful for future repairs, if any. Hopefully it lasts for, you know, another hundred years. It's old, but it's in great, great shape. Uh, so we could ask DPW. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. That. 
All right. Um, so that's good. I, I think that actually helped us chew a little bit of time off the, uh, off the clock in terms of evaluating some of these applications. So um, I think I would like to do a subsequent meeting um, and get that on the calendar from everybody. How is, um, probably I'll look at my own calendar first. And I'd like to avoid vacation week for most folks. Uh, could everyone do a week from tonight, Thursday the 16th? Assuming we can get a room and cam available. So you get Great yep. Pond going on at the Senior Center on okay. the 16th. Great. It's a four o'clock. Oh, no. Okay. no, it's at six thirty. Six thirty. You're right. I'm sorry. All right. Different Oh, that's on the six. Okay, I wouldn't want to go up against that because that because that would take out you, John. You're out as well. Okay, and probably Jack. Um, all right. So, how about the night before? Could we do the fifteenth? Yeah. I think you're, I'm you. You might be occupied. Okay. Would we'll be late. You'd be late. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Um, could we, is that possible, do you think? think so. When's the 15th? Okay, okay. Well, let's, let's target 7 o'clock on the 15th. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. John, you're good. We have enough time to post that. Yeah, that's I think, okay. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, Gene, that gives us enough time to post, right? Because we'll have to post by Tuesday, right? For our, our Monday. Monday, sorry, Monday. Yeah, okay. We'll have time to post. You with that? Okay. Um, all right. Well, now let's uh, we'll shoot for that meeting location to be determined, but hopefully right back here, um, provided we can get Cam lined up. But we'll uh, we'll confirm that uh, probably tomorrow. So be on the lookout in your emails. So uh, okay. I don't have any other business to address. Um, can I get a motion on our minutes, please? Real quick. Yes, Tim. On this fifteenth, what do you have in mind to to talk about any oh. particular projects? Yeah, we're gonna. So the the goal will be to invite in Laurie Burzlaff to discuss. Um, housing. You know, yeah, the, the affordable housing trust, and, uh, and the the two um, the Neil Painting and Stevens Carriage House applications they put in. Uh, we we'll have Andrew Shapiro in to discuss the historic preservation master plan as well as whatever he can shed light on on uh, the Black Swan application we just discussed in the uh, the rail trail. Um, we would have, I think we're, we think we've covered everything from the library with Stan tonight. So I don't think we need to have a subsequent discussion on that. I uh, would have someone from the trustees in, um, and I think we'd like to have a couple of folks from Ridgewood come in if we, if we could, Mr. Pellich, if you could bring in uh, the gym or whoever else may be fully knowledgeable on all the applications would be great. Um, and we'll just have some subsequent questions on those. Uh, and then we'll start with executive session, Gene, on Bradford Street. And that's it. And if you'll be here, Mr. Pellage, we may discuss a little bit more about um, Sutton Pond if we have subsequent questions. All right. Good for you. I'm right. sorry. Yeah, no, good. That's make sure. Got yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, all right, can I get a motion on the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes of, what was the date? Yeah, January 12th. January 12th, <laughs> uh, as written and submitted in the record. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it is unanimous. Uh, can I get another motion? Motion to adjourn. Uh, waiting for a second there. Um, all right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll call you notice. Yeah. We are adjourned. Thank you all for Thank very you. much. Great.